Welcome to the map Forts of Aizen in a one-on-one -on -one matchup between two expert players in a phenomenal matchup between good and evil. We have the Mordor player Baldwin the Fort versus the green Rohan player Dunadine. Double farm opening for Dunadine. He's gonna recruit Merirok Brandybuck. And we will have a Orc Pit Slaughterhouse opening for Mordor. He's going to capture this one. The money is kicking in a bit faster. So he doesn't need to wait too long. He needs to still wait like 10 seconds, but I think that's still a valuable start, which will give you the boost in the early game Mordor desperately needs to get through the rough early game. I mean, you have a couple of options. You can go also for the double Orc Pit opening, which will give you even a bit more early game presence, make it quite easy for you to defend your settlements at the beginning of the game. And you can also creep with the countless amount of Orcs you will recruit from the two Orc Pits at the beginning. However, your eco is going to be a bit far uh, farther behind. Um, you know, it's like a double-edged sword. It can work out. And with the creeping later on, you will kind of make it up for the eco loose you will have at the beginning. Because with the double orc pit, you can actually creep like two, three layers before the first Rohirrim will arrive. However, that's a, you know, that's still a difficult matchup for Mordor on a map like this. Forts of Eisen is a medium-sized map. There are definitely maps which will favor the mod faction a bit more. Uh, like Westworld, for example. But on a small map like this, Rohan will shine bright like a diamond. He's trying to creep, but I think the Golem kind of failed. So he might not be able to do this creep in a healthy way. I think I still think that he will do that. He will get the money from the crypto. I don't think he will survive with the level 2 orcs. They can't get away there. So get the money and accept your fate that you will lose. But he doesn't pay attention to the orcs. He will not even grab the money. If Rohan gets the money here, that's going to be the worst case scenario. But Mordor is luckily paying attention and will grab the treasure. However, he will be losing this settlement over there. Because he was using the orcs for the creeping purpose. Hobbit is doing a good job denying Mordor from recapturing the settlement. Every second matters. And also, beautiful looking base for Mordor. In the meantime, the stable is fully built up for Rohan. And the first Rohirrim will arrive on the field. Uh, let's see what the plan is. I mean, obviously, what you want to do is always keep your opponent checked. And destroy the settlement over there as soon as possible. You want to kind of break Mordor early game. Later on, you will have to deal with the soldiers of Ruin. With the mountain trolls from the troll cage. So it's not going to get any easier for you. As the Haradrim Paris has been already fully built up. He's towering up. And the first Rohirrim will be immediately sent to the castle of Mordor and punish him for not building up towers at the beginning. The slaughterhouse is gonna go definitely down. Rohirrim are dealing hella damage, slaughterhouse not being quite tanky. Very vulnerable structure, but one of them has been already hitting level 2. That's great. And Mordor is trying to creep this, but the Haradrims are not paying attention. Now, Eye of Sauron will be used, I believe, for the first time in this game. I've not seen it before. And the Rohirrim have to be careful. They need to disengage now. The second Rohirrim immediately sent forward. And that's exactly what you are supposed to do. Most people making the mistake that they are going for the creep early on. It's not very needed. You know, you want to always destroy the eco first. And you can always go for the Rohirrim number 3, Rohirrim number 4. To do the, to do the creeping afterwards, you know. These creeps should be always yours. So, you can always take them. However, Mordor is taking now the third creep in this map, which is pretty good for Mordor. It will help Mordor to reach to the industry spike a bit sooner. But he's losing map in the meantime. However, he has a very good looking base. He built a furnace. I believe that's going to be demolished later on once he has the money for the troll cage. But instead of waiting there for no reason, he's building up and then he can demolish. When you demolish, you get always half the money back anyway. And while it's built up, you should always get more than half the money so it's valuable trade to build it collect some money demolish it to get half the money back and then replace the structure or the settlement with a troll cage and that's going to be exactly the plan industry has been used also going to be helpful to help the slaughterhouse to reach level 3 a bit faster that's going to be a hella hp boost on the slaughterhouse and also it's going to be able to shoot you know a win win situation and that's going to be the creep number 4 for Mordor. That's amazing. So 4 out of 6 creeps was taken by the Mordor player, Baldwin. 
In the Rohirrim have to be careful there. There are too many orcs, so we need to disengage. This creep should be taken by Rohan. And there is only one more creep remaining on the map Forts of Eisen. So Rohan is around about two power points collected. There is only one orc pit and a Haradrim palace. The third production building is going to be the troll cage. And trolls are uh, always running in 2.22. So you can not only camp with them in your base, but also kind of put pressure with them on your opponent. So, um, you know, Rohan is one of the factions that has also plenty of options. And one of the options is, of course, to go for the regular thing, go for the armory, go for the upgrades, get Theorin, get the power points for the elves and look for the rush. But what you can also do is go for the Eowyn, Eoma combination. The spear throws of the siblings of Rohan are capable of one-shotting a mountain troll. So you spear throw with Eoma and Eowyn and the troll will be taken down. And later on you will have also Eoma leadership which adds a lot of damage to the table making it way easier for your Rohirrim Arches later on to deal with the Trolls and the Nazgûs and the Witch King. I think he's gonna go for the Theorin plus the Bleeds and Armor, going also for the Banner. But the map is looking blue to me. You know, that's pretty good for Mordor. Uh, the runes are taking slowly but surely the farm here also down. And we have three Rohirrim up on the field. The Forge Bleeds, Heavy Armor, all of them are at least level 2. These two are even level 3. Each level means significant boost of damage. And he's still missing out a bit, a tiny bit, for the Elven Alliance summon. So I think he's gonna try to fish the power points by killing those orcs. And getting even closer. Map is looking still blue. Mordor money is looking hot. He's towering up, kind of afraid of a potential rush. But towers won't be quite helpful. So in order to get the troll key to level 4 at 2, you need to recruit at least 4 mountain trolls. This troll has also a tree in his hand, so he can't just simply eat an orc. And I think he's gonna go down. Theoden is level 1. It would be amazing if Theoden could get the experience here for the skill, but I think the elves will get the last hit. But that's totally fine. Now the rush is gonna happen. The tower should always aim on Theoden on a, on a thing that you can actually kill. Uh, the Rohirrim are taking a lot of damage, but there are two more coming. Theoden knows that he's being targeted by the towers, backing, up, backing off a little bit. This tower is going to go down. Trolls need to back off. There are still some Elven warriors, uh, the Rohan player, microing around. Theoden super low on HP, and heal is going to be used to get him back to 70% HP. Troll is doing a good job knocking down the units, but as Troll has no uh, drama troll leadership, plus the Rohirrim have the leadership from Theorin, they don't get one-shotted. He's towering up to kind of deny the elves to shoot, but the commitment will pay off, and also the last troll is gonna go down. The troll cage is gonna follow up right after. If he doesn't demolish it, he will get zero money out of that, but he's not demolishing it at the time. Even though it says it, you get the money, but you still don't. And I think only one of the Rohirrim has been taken down, but a great amount of damage has been dealt to the castle of Mordor. So Mordor has to make a choice. It looks like you want to go for the devastation, use it right off the bat to get closer to the money of the Nazgul. There's still a decent map control which Rohan has to take care of as soon as possible. Because Mordor, uh, Rohan is still not able to deal with a potential Witch King rush, you know? Eowyn is a be being a great counter to that, obviously, but Eowyn all, al all alone can't, uh, you know, deal with the Witch King. Fire purchased. Now he's gonna start making more and more Rohirrim Archer. But remember, they've all always only Theoden leadership. Uh, later on, they might also have Aragorn, but for Eoma, it might be a little bit too late. Level 5 Rohirrim all over the place, doing a phenomenal job. Theoden is getting close to level 3, that's a major power spike for Rohan. Which should not be underestimated, because his level 3 will give you resistances to fear that kind of counters the screech of the Nazgul of the Witch King and the roar ability from the Drummer Trolls as well. A Nazgul. Now, Nazgul, if anything else, if nothing else, can still farm power points by killing the exposed Rohirrim warriors. You should just try to avoid this army with Theorin 
who is getting chunked by the rune soldiers a lot. But he's getting close to level 3. Uh, level 3. Now the Screech will be meaningless, even though Rohirrim Arts are only level 2. But you can see the Screech won't fear them off. Um, the Nazgul will keep committing. He's going to use the Tainted Land to deny the leadership from Theorin. So Rohirrim Arches deal less damage. And heal is not available quite yet for 5 seconds as the King of Rohan will die to the Nazgul of Mordor. Trollkitch has been rebuilt. For the second time, again, Eowyn, I am no man, and she's popping off. Uh, worth the investment, uh, one of the greatest heroes of the game when you play against Mordor. Her smite deals hella damage, as you have seen in the middle of the map. So Mordor, as expected, will lose some of the map control, but I like the place of this Mordor. He keeps getting uh, Haradrim Palace back to level 2. He wants to keep recruiting the rune soldiers, which are definitely capable of dealing with Rohan at every stage of the game. They are surprisingly tanky, unlike the pikemen of, Rohan, of Isengard, for example. So they don't die too quickly against fire arrows, which is amazing. Mordor is still, you know, putting up the pressure on the map, destroying this level 3 farm over there. That's going to be a big, big, big ouchie for Rohan. You will lose a lot of money. Level 3 slaughterhouse, like mentioned before. It's going to be able to deal a lot of damage as well. Rohir Marcha. You will get more and more of them. Kyojin has to be revived. That's going to take you, you know, 1 minute and 45 seconds. Level 4 is going to be the major power spike. When you die as level 4 or level 5, 6, you will have to wait for 2.5 minutes to get your King of Rohan back on the menu, boys. So Rohan, you know, growing rich, obviously, has in total four power points in the bank now he might go for the outpost control and here's still some yeoman archers he can place them inside the tower of the outpost as you can see runes you know they are kind of time consuming here the major damage dealers to the runes are not the rohirrim arts actually the elves and when, whenever you can force your opponent to summon the stuff in a in a less offensive way like this for example it's always a winning fight for mordor you lose one settlement against a summon like elves to lose one rune soldier. The beast rush will not be that effective anymore. There are multiple runes in the castle, lots of towers, level 3 slaughterhouses, and also plenty of trolls. Now, the major thing is to protect this troll cage before, uh, until the drummer troll can arrive. And one of the trolls has been taken down. Unfortunately, when they die sometimes, they dance around, and for that reason, the other troll was knocked down on the ground. So, Alvin Wood has been picked, and runes should not be fighted this way. Runes are extremely strong. As he's fighting against the trolls, the runes are kind of demolishing the army, and Rohan is underestimating the troll damage. I mean, the, the rune damage. And yeah, he lost a couple of trolls, but look the damage he received as the Nazgul has been returned from the graveyard. And the next power spike we are looking for for Mordor is definitely the Witch King, as the King has been taken down by the same Nazgul for the second time in this game. And Mordor still in a decent map control with exclusively orcs. This level 3 orc has now unlocked the Black Orcs passive. It will shred through the armor and through the hp bar of the farms in a few seconds so it should be definitely dealt with otherwise it will go down to this farm and destroy this in few seconds but Theorin being dead of course will again cost you know rohan a lot of time the time he will lose will also favor mordor he will get rich from this lot house over there his beast durability and the endurance of the castle will go up until everything is gonna hit level three you know Troll Cage will hit level 3 as well, will unlock the 6500 HP mark. Make it quite difficult. And you can see the damage of the level 3 orcs against the level 3 farm is quite high. And losing this will be a big ouchie, because you can't replace level 3 buildings, ever. So Darkness has been unlocked from the Spellbook. 4 power points for Rohan. He went for the land Alvin Wood, I mean Alvin Wood, uh, Alvin Alliance. Draft and heal. Eowyn is level 3. Could use the disguise. You know, doesn't really do too much. It will actually kind of make her a bit more tanky. You know? And your opponent might not recognize her. It's a disguise ability after all. 
Level 3 farms also inside the bees. He went for the Grand Harvest on the farms to get a bit more money. Rohan is also a faction that requires a lot of resources. Hildin King has been returned from the graveyard. The outpost has some self-protection with the Yeoman Archers inside the outpost. So the Nazgul can't commit. Drama Troll, level 3 Troll Cage. Mordor's Eco is looking not bad. 5,000 in the bank. The Vestation can be used every 3 minutes and 45 seconds for additional resources. And with this help, especially, you know, in a minute, he will get the spike he's looking for. Witch King, Darkness, I, Drama Troll. That's the maximum leadership you can get with the more affection. Rohan is preparing though. He's like afraid of a potential castle rush. He's uh, building up them some defenses, you know. Stitch you behind, wall banner on top of the wall, which also will give you more damage, more armor, and more range. Helps you to kill the trolls before they can reach to your wall. Darkness has been already used. Plenty of rune soldiers, which I really like a lot. Trolls are charging, but you know, Rohan realizing, okay, I can't win the fight. He's using the speed now. You know, kiting. Kiting, hitting, running. Whenever Mordor disengaging, he's turning and shooting them. And remember, evil factions have no wall. They often have no well uh, for the for the HP recovery. So their HP is gonna stay low like this. You know, even if, if you can't finish them off, getting them low is always a benefit. The spike we are looking for for um, Rohan is of course the level 4 from Rohan's King with the Glorious Charge and also the Cloud Break. Beautiful hit as they were clumped like this. That's gonna give Mordor a lot of power points. He's up to 2. After Darkness, Devastation, Industry, Eye and Tainted Land. And he's up to 8000 which will be enough to recruit the Witch King, the leader of the Nine. On the land, they are even tankier. When you put them into porcupine formation, they will even become more tanky. So the armor stacking is going to be real. So now, what, what's, what can be the plan for Mordor now from this situation? I mean, obviously, what you can do is go for the for the uh, troll uh, for the siege forks. You know, get some catapults up on the field. Catapult a hard counter to this uh, Rohirrim archer battalion. Protect your catapults with your trolls and runes. It will make it impossible for the regular Rohirrim to ever reach out to your catapults. But also what you can do is go for the plenty of trolls action. However, whenever you realize that your opponent is in a campy situation like this, making uh, engaging to this will cost you lots of units and lots of uh, momentum power. Ooh, the snipe on the, on the Nazgul. But the Nazgul is over chasing for no reason and it will pay with its life as Rohan's king getting level 4. There comes the glorious charge but Eowyn is making a flip flop and will get one shotted. Revenge for the taking down Nazgul. But the Witch King is underestimating the DPS of this glorious chargely buffed army and he is going to survive with 1 HP. However, as you can see, the base is incredible durable so he's trying to change the target and go for the secondary wall instead so from the right side there is the alvin alliance special summon a lot of firepower for the rohan army and now we have even highly leveled rohirrim upon the field the trolls without leadership from witch king which was far away and the drummer troll will die like flies the runes are still doing a phenomenal job but this time the witch king won't be that lucky and go down to the goblin town in the meantime though take a look into the top side of the map forts of Isin, mordor using the moment of him of him attacking and pushing rohan back to take down the, the all the farms from his opponent with orcs all alone and that's the beautiful part about mordor orcs they cost nothing but time you only need at this point 20 seconds for each orc and whenever you lose them, you will gain power points. Now for the next big fight though, we will have the Cloud Break available for Rohan. That will be a counter to the trolls. Uh, it will reduce their speed and also their armor. So they can't catch up to you anymore. You can kite them way easier. And whenever you hit them, you will hit them way harder because of the armor reduction. I will not let so he's not going for the Andri Sword simply because he doesn't have the power points for that. Aragorn will be super slow and we also hurt Eoma. Uh, you could also go for Legolas, you know, just to add a bit more DPS. However, Legolas won't deal too much damage to the Strolls with this much leadership. There comes the Cloud Break. 
He will kill two trolls. You can see the speed reduction is coming in clutch. And, uh, but he can't just simply rush forward. There are still some rune soldiers. He can't just trample over them. It will just one-shot your army. So Glorious Charge and also the Cloud Break has been used to kill two trolls and two battalions of the rune soldiers. Cloud Break's effect doesn't last as long. You know, it's only affecting them for 30 seconds, which by the, by the time it's going to be already over. So it's like the least um, duration of the effect. But it's the most effective thing, you know? It's reducing, it's debuffing them in two ways. The Witch King, unfortunately, has been killed before. Again, it's a major damage and armor leadership. You, you can't really miss out. Now you have only Drama Troll leadership. But the runes are always being sent forward with the trolls. That's something you always need to pay attention to. That's a very great and pro move, actually. People don't do that. They always fight with trolls. But whenever you put the runes in between, your opponent are, is, are, is forced to deal with your trolls. And while he's doing that, your runes will shred to the Drohirim Archer army. Rohan is taking over the map again, as expected. We get to see more and more, uh, you know, Rohirrim Archer. That's the mobility advantage you have. The chance that you can kite, which you can with normal archers, because trolls will always outrun every regular archer in the game, you know, but they can't outrun horses. So you can kite and disengage whenever you choose to. And the only way Mordor can deal with this is if he brings the fight to you, which of course is easier said than done. In an ideal situation is he's gonna go in and you need to now defend and he's using the glorious charge of cooldown he has now double leadership with aragorn and Thurin. i mean triple leadership with glorious charge could use the king's fever also every two minutes to give the army a bit more experience and also he's placing eoma in between the rohirrim archer army and that's why he's almost all of a sudden almost level four you know and when he's level 4, it's going to be a major upgrade and a huge, you know, milestone. Aragorn without Anduril is super slow. Aragorn is lost. One does not simply walk into Mordor. <laughs> and it's going to go down. That's why uh, the Anduril sword is such a big and important upgrade for Aragorn. Basically the same way like Gandalf the White is from the Gondor spellbook for Gandalf. It will give you more damage, more tankiness, but also more speed. Speed, without speed, Aragorn is not going to be able to do anything. 12 power points for Mordor, almost 6 power points for Dunedain, the Rohan player. He's going to farm more and more power points. The Nazgul is going in, beautiful hit. Now the Witch King is going in, and that's also what you can do. Go in with your Nazgul's Witch King, and because he needs, he needs to disengage from the Trolls, whenever he stops to shoot your Nazgul or your Witch King, your Trolls will close the distance and then start smashing, you know? Eoma level 4 almost, though, that's gonna be scary. That's 70% more damage. A raw damage power from the Lord, Horse Lord of Rohan. And also more than his farming power points now, which he desperately needs. To close the gap between himself and Dunedain in terms of the power points, you know. Obviously, Balrog and EOD are game winning abilities, so you want to be the one who unlocks it first. The runes are falling like flies as the level 6 Rohirrim arches are shooting. The Witch King, the Nazgul's are engaging, but you always need to keep attention where your uh, trolls are. Now, the turnaround on the Nazgul. But there is no Eowyn as far as I can see. It looks like he never revived Eowyn. He only revived Aragorn. Eowyn is a must-have. Just to have the burst damage. You just burst them. And it will kind of deceive the cheese what he's right now doing, you know? Here it's going to be tricky though. Because here he has uh, even more leadership. 70%. 75% more damage from the statues. There comes the Cloud Break. Demolish the structures in time. To not feed power points. The Witch King is committing, unfortunately, a uh, smart move to demolish the structures. If he didn't demolish this tree, it would give... Ooh, what a fine hit, disabling all of them. Eoma is getting knocked down. Eoma, 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 he doesn't want to kill Eoma. And he's going to be able to survive with 1 HP. I mean, the amount of times heroes have been surviving in this game with 1 HP is kind of crazy, bro. But again, the kiting has to be annoying. Also, the host of this game, by the way, is Mordor. So despite being off host, the, the amount of micro the Rohan player is putting in work, you know, 
is pretty effective. Eoma got level 4. Now, let's calculate. When they would fight around this statue, 75% damage, 70% damage, and 40% damage from Turin, plus 20% damage from the Glorious Charge. You know, these are numbers, and this is even without Aragorn. Aragorn would add another 50% damage. So, like, that's a damage calculation which will end up in one shot. Like, one touch, one shot. Okay, so Army of Mordor is being prepared. 16 power points against 8 power points are pretty much equal. Um, 1 and a half power points missing against 3 and a half power points missing. Remember, evils are getting the power points a bit faster as they need 20 power points. But here, uh, there is just too much raw damage power. Uh, Yeoman archers all over the place. Four of them actually on top of the wall. Tilden is also buffing them up a little bit. Stage behind and also the wall banner. That's a lot of damage against a faction that is kind of big against fire arrows. That's why you need catapults against this. However, defending catapults is also not the easiest thing in the world. Nazgul is running it down, 70 power points, but now Dunedain has killed a lot to unlock his EOD. EOD is available, which could be used defensively, but I think you don't need it. You can deal with this without having to use the EOD. It's gonna break the wall banner, but during this... Oh! I think there was a misclick at the bottom left side. There is nothing to kill. Okay. Interesting choice, I know, I must say. Very interesting choice. Ooh, bad trample. Triple party drummer trolls. Oh, at least they catch up to the trolls here and damage them a little bit. Aragorn is ultra low. Yes, Atelas though, could use it. He's gonna use the major heal from the spellbook. Aragorn should be the target. He has no Andril, he will die in a second. And Mordor has 19 and a half power points. 19 and a quarter, to be precise. But as he's losing stuff, he will gain it. So it's a matter of time. I mean, this Mordor is playing it offensively. But I think, like, you can do this until you siege. When you see this on top of your wall, on top of the wall of your opponent, you need to understand that you will need the siege weapons so that can outrange the archers and one shot them. You know, these Yeoman archers are only damage dealers. They have no tankiness. They will get one-shotted from the catapult. Witch King has been revived. Plenty of trolls still alive. Darkness on cooldown. Cloud Break is gonna be, I mean, the Glorious Shot is gonna be used. Maybe Commitment on Aragorn would be a juice. The Witch King is diving in. It's gonna be the target of the Rohirrim archers. And now they are hitting very hard. But trolls have been smashing in the meantime. Did Aragorn die actually? No, he didn't die. But he could be the target. Like, like I said, look, when, when he's gonna be the target, he's gonna die so quickly. There comes the Balrog of Morgoth. Pew! Everything, everyone is low. But Trolls choose to disengage. Yeah, however, he was having a backup already, you know? I mean, he knew it. It is gonna come. And he was keeping some of the Rohirrim Arches far, far away. Smart players, expert players, they are called experts for a reason. Both players are doing a phenomenal job in this game. Minor mistakes, which always will happen when you play flawlessly. You will never lose a game. But they are a human after all, you know what I'm saying? Okay, now the damage has been changed and you can see the quality of life differential just with the leadership of Eoma. What was doing what was it doing for the army all alone, you know? And also level up advantage on this Rohir Marches. And knowing that he can't win, he's gonna close the game and Dunadain will take the W as Rohan has been winning against Mordor on the map Forts of Eisen. And hopefully it was enjoyable for you guys. If it was, you know what to do. Leave a like, subscribe. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.